Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is on how I created this piece behind me. This was um, a commission piece and the lady wanted to know if I could create a rainforest piece. So I asked her if she wanted some texture in it and what elements and she said, listen, I'll leave it up to you. I trust your judgment and I just can't wait to see what you come up with and this is what I've come up with. So in this video I'm going to show you how I added the texture for the ground in the tree trunks, how I then coloured that, uh, the background ready to take the resin layer and then the final part of the video is how I created the texture for the leaves and the base of the trunks using potpourri. So it's quite a simple design, although it does look quite complicated. Um, I also added some gold highlights in the background for two reasons. One being to give the impression of more tr tree trunks in the background. And also that when the light hits it, we get like a glow happening behind the trees. So in different times of the day, you get different uh, looks and um, effects happening on the piece. So without further ado, let's get into how I created this piece. Okay, so I first started with my MDF panel which I've primed on the back ready to go so I don't have to worry about that later on. Now initially I started out by marking um, where the um, horizontal line was going to go but I needn't bother doing that actually because the um, I'm not actually going to do a straight line with the ground anyway and what I've also done is I've marked out where the trees are going to go and again this has just been hand, uh, hand drawn uh, just to, for a guide uh, trees are not perfect so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight up and down or anything like that um, so you can have them on a slight angle if you want or they can be crooked it's entirely up to yourself so what I'm doing here is I'm actually starting with the ground layer so I'm putting a generous um, layer of multi-purpose filler on the bottom and um, I actually started off using a stick to try and create the texture and then I used a scalpel but I wasn't quite getting the texture I wanted so I actually reverted to using my fingers and all I'm doing here is I'm just dabbing on there to pat the texture paste down but also to um, give it a little bit of roughness so I am, I am sort of following the lines and um, just giving it a bit of a look of the ground it doesn't have to be perfect this is going to be covered in resin anyway so it's just to add a little bit of texture I'll then leave that to dry for an hour. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but just enough that when we put the texture of the trees, it actually sits on top of this layer. So just come back in a little while. Now, it's quite warm here at the moment, so this dried fairly quickly. So depending on where you are in the world, um, you know, you may need to leave it a little bit longer, especially if you're in a colder climate at the moment. But, um, but you can test that. So when you just press down, and you'll see that it's, it's dried up. So just again adding a generous layer of the multi-purpose filler just to um, get the texture down as quick as possible because like I say it's quite warm here and it is going to dry fairly quickly. I want to get it down um, quite quickly and using the side of a, a, a spatula I'm actually dragging it through to create a bark feel. So I've not got the, um, the marks from the spatula just applied there I'm actually dragging it through to create um, stipples in it to give the impression of bark so I'll just pull that through uh, until I'm happy with the, the shape and the design of it
as you can see by letting the first layer dry first of all you can see that this has now got texture on top of that layer so this will make it look like the trees are in the foreground that was the reason behind doing it this way Now I let this dry for um, 24 hours and now I'm applying a sealer um, just like I did to the back. Now the reason why I didn't put the sealer on first is I wanted to make sure that the texture paste stuck to the board um, and that it wasn't just stuck to the sealer just in case the seal the sealer decides to lift away from the board. Now the sealer I'm using is um, called Aqua Block. This is a waterproof sealer that's designed for um, kitchens and bathrooms. Now the reason why I use this one is that because MDF can um, soak in moisture and things like that I just want to make sure that we've got a good barrier between the board and the resin. Now it's not necessary to um, use an aqua um, based sealer however this is just my preference because it just creates that waterproof barrier and it also gives a nice base for the resin to sit on. And don't forget to do the sides as well of the board. We've already done the backs, that's fine. So we'll just do the sides, make sure the sides are well coated. And we're then going to let leave this to dry. Now this particular sealer dries very, very quickly. So you have to be quick in, in getting it onto the board. Um, and I'll give this two coats uh, before moving on to the next layer. Now for this layer I'm just applying black acrylic paint. Now I'm using um, like a children's paint. It doesn't have to be an expensive acrylic paint because it's literally just the background. So this tube of paint I bought from a local discount store. It cost me $5 and one tube does this whole board. So um, yeah, so it doesn't have to be anything expensive. You can use any black acrylic paint that you have to hand. And then you just make sure that Again, the sides are covered that you've got in between all the creases and grooves of your texture. Because I'm actually only going to do one coat of this black because I'm going to put other colours on top. It doesn't need any more coats. In the past I, ha I will have um, done two coats but in this one it's not necessary. So for the trees what I've done is I'm using a Deco Art acrylic um, metallic gold. And this one I think is um, like an antique gold and I'm literally just brushing it on um, not worrying about getting into the creases, the grooves or anything like that because I'm quite happy to let the gold sit on the top because the, the black underneath then shows off the texture so just to keep applying um, extra layers on there until you're happy with the density of the gold now, from this angle, it doesn't look very gold, but from the side, there is quite a bit of gold there. Now, for this this part of the, the ground, I'm actually using um, a powdered pigment mixed with some ir iridescent um, medium. Now, the reason why I do that is, one, you get the metallics from the powder, but two, the medium actually helps adhere the powder before we apply the resin. You can just put the powder on top, but I always worry that maybe when I pour the resin that the powder may move and run off the top of the texture and down into the groove. So by doing it this way you're actually applying the texture to the top, uh, sorry, the powder to the top of the texture. But here I'm actually going, because I wanted it a bit thicker in places, I'm actually going over with just neat powder and I'll go over this now and paint over the top with the iridescent medium. Now 
you can see some areas has got like um, some highlights but that's fine because what you do with the iridescent you actually get a real nice glimmer and shine from that also along with the powder and as always I'll list um, the products used in the description so don't worry too much at this point they will all be listed there for the, the background here I'm just using powder and I'm just doing it in an upwards and down motion to make it look like it's raining and again I'm going over the powder with the iridescent medium and this is quite effective for giving um, like a downpour look you can see it's um, quite natural looking and looks like it's uh, pouring with rain which is something I really like and I'll definitely do that again and once that's done we um, go over it um, well, I've just gone over the little bit of the iridescent medium just on the edges of the trees just to give like a bit of a highlight on there and now we just leave this to dry overnight because I want to make sure that it's completely dry before we apply the resin layer so even before we do the resin it does actually look quite effective you can see the shimmer and the um, sparkle coming from this piece before we even applied the gloss layer so I'm liking how this is looking so far. Okay, so it's it's been left overnight and it's now completely dry and I'm adding a clear layer of resin initially, which I'm just going to rub in with my hands just to make sure that it's down into all the creases and that it's spread about. And because this is thin, um, a small amount of resin, it does actually go quite a long way and using hands just helps move it around so I'm just making sure that um, the sides are coated as well so that any resin that I pour um, in a minute will actually run down the sides also so you don't need to worry too much about completely covering this piece if you've got some areas that are not quite covered it doesn't really matter because we are going to apply more resin to this So I'm just going to give this a quick zap with the heat gun just to make sure that there's no bubbles before applying the next layer of resin. And I'm not waiting for this layer to cure or anything like that. The next layers are going to be poured straight on the top. So there's no need to uh, go away. I'll, I'll um, do that straight on the top once I've finished giving this a quick zap. So for this part I've actually mixed four colours in with the resin. We've got white, a lime green, the emerald green, the same emerald green that I used in the background and a metallic black. And just give that a quick zap with the heat gun just to zap any bubbles. And now just using a metal spatula, I'm just mixing these colours together. I'm not over mixing, I'm just giving it a quick push up and down so that the colours blend to get together slightly. It doesn't need to be perfect or anything like that, so just a quick drag up and down. And then I'll just go back along the bottom edge and just tidy up those, those white areas so that they um, look a little more natural. So I'll just give this a quick zap with the heat gun just to make sure there's um, no bubbles and things as usual and we'll just go through and do that several times. Now what I'm doing here, some of the colours was leaking into the tree so just using the paper towel and just lifting some of that resin from there um, and just keep an eye on that, you know, you can keep lifting bits of resin that leaks across. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually adding some shadows to the trees because we've got the highlight to the right hand side looks on the left hand side upside down like this but so I'm just going to do some black off to the left hand side 
or the right hand side as you're looking at the picture and then I still have a, add a little bit of the lime green left so I'm just mixing that in to just give some highlights in the, the ground so as if the sun is shining through some of the trees So now what I've done here is I've actually put, put some um, gold spray paint into a cup. Now I've put it into a cup that already had some cured resin in because I believe that spray paint can melt certain plastics. So just to be on the safe side, it's in a cup that has pre previously been used for resin. And all I'm doing here is I'm just adding the gold to the base near the ground and then just dragging the stick up through the green and the black areas just to give the impression that there's um, some trees and things in the background but what also does like I mentioned earlier it actually adds highlights in this so when the sun shines on it or you've got certain lights in different angles of your room you'll see um, a different effect so at different times of the day it will look different so I've also mixed in with the spray paint a little bit of the mineral turpentine. Now I really like working with mineral turpentine and resin because what it does is when you add it to the colours, it actually has a mind of its own and it spreads the resin in a unique way. And so you get some really interesting um, shapes and things happening in the resin. So, um, so that's all I've done. I've just added a little bit into the cup with the gold spray paint. So I just keep adding more gold until I'm happy with the look. And I perhaps should have stopped there, but <laughs> sometimes you don't know when, when the best time to stop is. And again, a quick zap with the heat gun. So now on to the third and final layer. What I've done is I've placed some potpourri on this um, plastic plate and I've poured some resin onto the plate and just using my gloves and coating the resin by just moving, so coating the potpourri by just moving it round in the resin. So just making sure that's all coated and then just strategically placing the potpourri where I think it needs to be added. I think I used two bags of potpourri on this piece and I just go back off screen there and just add a little bit more to the plate. I like this, so I'm just using my fingers to scrunch up the potpourri in the poured resin. And you don't need a lot of resin for this because you're literally just coating the pieces. The artwork itself is still wet, so you've got the resin underneath plus what you're coating the pieces in, so this will stick quite well. Well, that's pretty much it just add um, the potpourri where you feel it needs it and then leave it overnight to cure in the morning what I'll do is I'll just come and check and I'll just um, see if there's any pieces of potpourri that didn't um, catch in the resin or whatever that and I'll remove those but I would imagine that they, that would be fine actually it was I don't know why I'm saying I would imagine because I was there and it was it was actually fine um, so just leave that to cure overnight. Now this board is actually quite a thin board so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to brace the back of this and turn it into a floating board because I'm going to have the brace come in 100mm from the edge so it's just going to stand away from the wall. So I will take some photographs of when that's finished uh, and add that to my page. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas to create texture in your resin art. Please subscribe to this channel and um, you will, as I mentioned earlier, you'll find links in the description to the items used and you'll also find links to my Facebook page, Facebook group, Instagram and website etc. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks for now. Bye.